Today we are reviewing the Air 3 from DJI. This is a brand new drone. We're going to take a look. It's got a brand new look, new features, intelligent flight modes, a brand new controller as well, and then also we have new batteries. Let's get to it. Let's get started and talk about the aircraft in itself. Very similar to what we've seen from DJI with the folding legs right here. You still have to fold the legs in the right order, otherwise they touch each other. And then as far as the predecessor, which was the Air 2S right here, well, they look very similar. Just maybe a little bit more polished, a few different lines, slightly bigger as well on the Air 3 compared to the Air 2S, and then a slightly different color of gray, but overall we keep the same look. Now you notice that we have the different sensors right here in the front, very similar to the three family, the Mavic 3 family, same thing right here in the back. And then also we have that design using the different battery. So here's the new battery right here, which is a lot bigger than the battery that we had before on the Air 2S. And then also a new design with the Air 2S, it fit on the top. With this one, it's going to fit right in the back like it does on the Mavic 3 series. Also something new, we have two cameras now in the front right here. One is a 1X and one is a 3X. We'll be talking about the differences a little bit later in this video. We have the auxiliary light at the bottom right here. We have lights on the arm, we've seen this before. And then also we have a lot of venting on the side. This looks like shark fins right here on the, uh, on the side and in the back as well to give you a good airflow. And then also we have a gimbal that rotates a little bit more than before. We have 90 degree down and also 60 degrees up. So overall a really cool design. Now when we compare it to other platforms that we've seen from DJI, specifically the Air 2S, the Mini 3 Pro and the Mavic 3 Classic, which are all pretty much in the same line of drones, this is going to be a little bit more expensive than the Mini 3 Pro. It's also going to be cheaper than the Mavic 3 Classic, so it fits right in between the two. And this is the update that we've been waiting for from DJI after the very, very popular Air 2S. This drone, everybody loves it. We've loved it. We've used it for a very long time until we replaced it in our studio using the Mavic 3 series, but now we're debating because this thing is actually really sweet. The Air 2S was 595 grams. The Air 3 is a little bit heavier at 720 grams. Now you can see the comparison with the other weights from the other drones. As far as flight time, a big improvement over the Air 2S and even quite frankly, over all the other drones that we've ever tested. This had the absolute best performance as far as battery flight time that we've seen. And we'll get to those numbers, the actual numbers in a minute. As far as zoom, this has a big advantage on paper over all the other drones in the same category because it has an optical zoom. 3x optical zoom as well as a 1x uh, regular optical zoom. The 3x in the other drones was only digital, so you're gonna have you're gonna see a big difference in quality uh, once you fire up this thing. Also, we have something quite surprising as far as the size of the sensor. This is a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, which is actually the same size as the Mini 3 Pro, which is smaller than the Mavic 3 Classic, but also smaller than its little brother right here, which had a one inch sensor. Uh, why? I'm not sure quite frankly. Now we'll see in a minute. I'm going to go over all the different image quality. Uh, you'll see we have a ton of different chart testing that we did and well maybe the results will surprise you a little bit. As far as the aperture, f1.7, the same that we saw on the Mini 3 Pro. On the 3x lens, f2.8, which is the same that we saw on the Air 2S. As far as ISO, you're going to have a wide range of different ISO depending on the settings, so I'll give you more information on that. Also, we have a new transmission system. We used to have the uh, O3 OQSync 3 on the uh, the newer drones from DJI. This is the first drone that's equipped with OQSync 4, and quite frankly, from the testing so far, it's pretty amazing. We were able to get into areas where we would otherwise lose signal, and then this new controller and the new OQSync 4 uh, was able to keep the signal. So that's actually a big upgrade. Um, this is also a new controller, the DJI RC2. This also comes with a RCN2, which is essentially the same thing without a screen, which is the upgrade from the RCN1, which we have seen in a ton of, of other drones in the past. Pretty much the four last four or five drones from DJI I've had this RCN1. They're upgraded to the RCN2. Not a whole lot has changed, but we'll get to that in a minute. As far as all the smart video modes and the photo mode, pretty much everything is the same as we've seen on the other platforms, so not a whole lot of changes here. As far as video resolution, you'll be surprised that there is no more 5.4K that we found on the Air 2S. Now you are limited to only 4K. That's a downgrade. I'm not sure the reason behind it. 
I'm not sure if a lot of people were never using the 5.4K, but with that being said, uh, I'm a little disappointed with that one, and uh, and we'll, I'm sure, eventually find out why they decided to do this. All right, let's get to our testing because I know this is what you guys want to hear. Now, we put this thing through the ringer. Every single time we get a new drone from any company, we have a set of tests that we have to do, and uh, we do these in a standardized environment here in our studio. We try to control everything. We try to control the temperature. We try to, we can't control the pressure, but we try to control the amount of wind. When we do flight time testing, for example, uh, we try to do this in our cyclo, which is located right here next to me in an enclosed environment, and uh, to make sure that our information is going to be comparable from drone to drone. I have to say, this is the drone that stayed the longest up in the air of every drone that we've seen. In the past, the Mini 3 Pro was the king of the uh, flight time, uh, right under 36 minutes. We actually were able to break 36 minutes with this. Now, you're going to say, well, isn't uh, over 40 minutes? It's advertised, yes, it is. In reality, we were at an equivalent uh, density altitude of 8,800 feet on the day that we tested. So as a result, we don't get as good flight time, but it's very comparable to the other drones. So we're always at the same altitude pretty much. So we can always test and compare. This is the best drone we've seen as far as flight time. Now, here's something that we found. These props right here, these are the propellers for the for the Air 3, the one that comes with the drone. We realized that they you can fit Mavic 3 propellers uh, on the back of the drone. You can't fit them in the front because they touch like really close right here to the sensor, but they fit in the back. So we decided to test it and see if we could uh, get more flight time. As that it turns out, yeah, we got a little over 3% more flight time using Mavic 3 propellers in the back. We got 37 minutes and 55 seconds, almost 38 minutes of flight time when we get 36 minutes and 32 seconds with the uh, Air 3 propeller. So all in all, this thing is a beast. It's going to stay up in the air forever. We did the testing when we were flying outside and the same thing happened. We were just amazed at how long the battery would last. So uh, fair warning on using the propellers, the Mavic 3 propellers in the back. We haven't done that in the wild outside to see if it is actually the same maneuverability. So I would say if you're going to do this at your own risk, test it at home. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth the extra flight time, but just know that you can actually get some more flight time by changing the propellers. As far as the, the, the noise on this aircraft, very comparable to the Mavic 3 series, but a slightly different sound, a little bit quieter. Uh, we found that about a foot underneath the drone, we were at about 83 decibels. Three feet away, we were at about 77 decibel, and then eight feet away, which is where we were testing about 70 decibel. It's nowhere near what we found on the Mini 3 series, but still for the size of the drone, it's actually really good. When you start ripping in sports mode, you'll hear it, but otherwise, if you're in normal mode, it actually disappears pretty quickly uh, into, the, uh, into the wild, into the ambient sound. Now, some pros and cons of things that we've seen so far. The uh, the pros, the omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, that was great. Uh, slightly different than what we've seen on the uh, Air 2S and even on some other drones that are uh, more expensive, but it works really well. The two lenses, I really love it, and I'll tell you why. We've been testing DJI drones, Mavic 3, with the 1X and then the 7X and then the 1X, the 3X and the 7X once we got the, uh, the, the Mavic 3 Pro. And I love the 3X. The reason is because it's right between the 7X and the 1X. I know it sounds obvious, but that 3X is just the right amount of zoom for most scenarios. 7X is difficult because you're going to get so close to your object, it kind of makes it a little bit with just too much zoom, right? It's great for some situations where you have big landscape and you want to really do that parallax effect, but that 3X is, is a sweet spot. So I'm excited that they, said, they decided to put this on here rather than put a 7X. 1X and 3X is the perfect combo. If you want 7X and you're gonna get the big drone, but I think most people will love having the 3X. This is pretty much like having a miniature Mavic 3. I, I, I just love that they took some of the best features from the Mavic 3, from the Mini 3, and then kind of put that all together and created this Air 3. Just overall, a great platform. Some of the cons that I don't really like so much, uh, you still have to open the legs in the right order. <laughs> That's annoying. They were able to fix it on one of the drone and I can't remember which one at this stage, but uh, all in all, I think the design of the aircraft is great. 
All right, let's talk about the controller. This is the RC2 controller. How do you know it's the RC2? Because it has antennas right here that move around. The original RC right here, not the Pro, just the RC did not have the antennas up here. Uh, so that's how you'll be able to, uh, to identify them. Also a slightly different color gray that actually matches the aircraft. Uh, as far as compatibility, I know you guys are gonna ask me, this is a pre-release, so I don't know yet what it's gonna be compatible with. Obviously, we've only been able to make it work with this drone, but I have a feeling it's gonna be compatible, backward compatible with older, recent DJI drones. Let's put it this way. I wouldn't be surprised if it's compatible with the Mini 3, with the uh, Mavic 3 series. Uh, I don't know about the Air 2S, but as far as everything else, the same great feel that you used to, it has the same uh, ergonomics. And then um, the, the sticks are a little bit different, I think on this one, uh, but you still find them hidden in the back right here. And then you still don't have the ability to install any apps, which I think is a big downside. And then uh, the antennas are gonna be able to be adjusted. I mentioned that, but I think that's a big plus if you wanna get better coverage. This could be the reason also why we get better performance in areas where we would lose the signal with this. We didn't lose the signal with this one. Now, as far as some specs in here, we have 1080 resolution at 30 frames per second coming in, 2.4 to 5.8 gigahertz, and then OQSync 4, I've mentioned this before. And of course it has a screen right here. Now, when we compare this to the RC Pro, which is the high-end model, there is no 5D button in here, so you can select things. Quite frankly, I don't care about that. It's a touch screen, so you'll be able to just move your finger around. You don't need an additional uh, a thumb button at the top. There's no navigation buttons on the side. I do like that on the RC Pro, but I think this is something that's, this is a lot cheaper. Uh, I'd be okay with not having those buttons and paying less money. Uh, it's also not as bright. This is 700 nits versus 1000 nits on the RC Pro. Uh, same thing for the DJI RC. The original uh, was also only 700 nits. Uh, we fly in the sun, in a very bright area. I flew this thing for the last couple of days pretty much nonstop, and I never had an issue, even in a bright day in the middle of July here uh, in, uh, in Northern Arizona where we have no clouds. Also a downside, there is no HDMI out. This is also the same that we've seen on the other, um, on the other controllers. And then a little bit of a change in here, instead of having two USB ports, there is only one. I never quite understood why there were two of them on the original uh, DJI RC, but it is what it is. This is where you're gonna charge and transfer your data. I think it's gonna be a lot easier anyway, and that way you don't get confused between, well, what does what. All right, let's move on to the camera on the drone. And then uh, we put this thing also through the ringer. We have a chart, a camera chart that we use uh, in our studio. We light it up every single time the same exact way so we can compare drone after drone after drone. And I'm gonna give you all that comparative footage in a minute. Now, let's talk about the sensor in here. One over 1.3 CMOS sensor, that's a 0.77 inch sensor on both of these lenses in here. There's a wide aperture of f1.7, the zoom is f2.8, and we have the ability to do 12 megapixel and 48 megapixel, very much like what we saw in the Mini 3 Pro. The ISO range is gonna go from 100 to 6400, although at 48 megapixel, you are limited to 3200 only when you take photos. And then your shutter speed is gonna go from two seconds to one over 8,000 of a second. Now, a very important note here, the settings in this drone, which is great, can be changed manually on both the 1X and the 3X, okay? We've seen drones in the past when the Mavic three, one of them came out. I think the, the, the regular Mavic 3 that has two lenses, the 7X and the 1X, you could not change anything manually on the, uh, on the 7X. And now you can on the 3X on this drone right here. So I like that. I was able to take pictures manually with both of them on our camera chart and it worked out really well. Uh, also, you have the ability to do manual mode in 48 megapixel, which you cannot do in the Air 2S. So that's also a great thing. The same intelligent flight modes that you're custom with with DJI. And if you're brand new with this, make sure you head over to our a beginner's guide. We posted a video uh, for those of you that have never flown a DJI drone. That's probably a great place to start. Um, we have quick shot, master shots, and then also those are available in 3X. And I think that's a great plus that we, uh, well, we never saw before, I think, on DJI drones. 
You can do bracketing photos, three photos or five photos. You have the panorama with four different modes, and then you can record in JPEG or in RAW, the DNG mode, um, and uh, or you can do just JPEG or just RAW if you wanted to. Let's get to the chart. I know you guys are waiting for this because, uh, well, this is our chart. We put it on our cyclorama. We light it up with a bunch of different lights that we can control individually. There's four lights in here that we can control individually and change the brightness to make sure we have proper exposure. We use an histogram to make sure everything is exposed the same from camera to camera. And then what I do in post is I put all these photos in Lightroom and then I bring the exposure back so that they're all the same all across. It's just a tiny little change of exposure usually. And then I export all of these in TIFF, T-I-F-F, with no compression. So you get the maximum quality. This is pretty much as good as it is when it comes from the raw file. And from here, we're gonna take a look at five different areas. And you can see those five different areas. Why did I pick these? Because uh, we have something more in the center. We have something more on the edges, on the left side, on the right side, on the top. We have a different texture with the grass. We have the torture test. I'll show you the torture test. We have color testing. So that way you can easily compare and see uh, which of these settings do you think works best for you. Now, I'm going to give you my opinion, but my opinion may vary from your opinion. This is a matter of which one do you like best. Sometimes you have to give away sharpness so you have noise, and sometimes you give away noise so you have sharpness. It's one of these things where it's a matter of preference. So I'm not right, you're not right, I'm not wrong, you're not wrong when you read this. It's whatever works best for you, and this is why we give you this data. You look at it and you decide if this is something that works for you. So I'm gonna start by comparing the 12 megapixel to the 48 megapixel to the first area on the chart. Now this is one of the torture tests on the chart. Remember, this is a very small portion of the chart right here, but all of these lines are actually supposed to be diagonal going from the top left to the bottom right. You can see the lines are spaced out a little bit more at the bottom of the image, but at the top of the image, it's always a torture test because a lot of sensors create uh, artifacts when we photograph this section. And I have to say, the Air 3 in this case did an amazing job. Whether it's at 12 megapixel or at 48 megapixel, um, it was able to actually get those lines better than most cameras. Uh, so far, the best camera that we've tested, believe it or not, is actually the Mini 3 Pro. It did the best on all these torture tests that we've seen on the charts. And what you see is at the top, again, 12 megapixel, at the bottom, 48 megapixel, from ISO 100 to ISO 3200. I excluded 6400 because it's only available in the 12 megapixel mode. But you can see from here, it kind of make your decision. What we'll do is we'll put a link to the full size images down in the description so you can actually see for yourself without the YouTube compression because I know that adds a little bit of, a, of an extra artifact. But basically looking at this, same results that we found with the Mini 3 Pro, which is that at 48 megapixel, from ISO 100, 200, and 400, 48 megapixel usually does better than 12 megapixel, but then after that, 12 megapixel does better. There is less artifact, there is less noise in the image, and that's very, to me, very obvious in this first part of the chart. So if you have to do images in low light conditions, I would recommend going to 12 megapixel, otherwise 48 megapixel works pretty well. When we move to the next section of the chart, which is where we have different colors, the green, the, the yellow, the red, and then some of the, the dark blue, then you can also see from here, going from ISO 100 to ISO 3200, on the low side of things, 48 megapixel seems to give you a little bit more sharpness, even though here it starts to deteriorate at 48 megapixel at ISO 400. And then after that, pretty much 12 megapixels seems to be doing better. Look at 3200 and look at the difference between the 48 and the 12 megapixel. I think it's pretty obvious right here um, what's happening to the image. Then we have another torture test area. And this one I love because pretty much every camera that we've put through this, except maybe one, uh, has I'm gonna say fail because it's not really a failure, but it's just so difficult to show that little uh, grid uh, pattern, especially right here in the middle, that always has artifact. It's not supposed to be colored. It's not to be to, supposed to be purple or green or whatever it is when we look at this information. It's just supposed to be plain black and white, and it's not. 
And again, you might say, oh, well, this sensor is not really good. Well, keep in mind, not a whole lot of cameras can get this. It's doing a pretty good job in this case. Again, you can see a little bit more noise being added uh, when we get to 3200, especially on the 48 megapixel. But what I've said before about the difference between the two is still true on this portion of the chart. Another section of the chart here, I like this one because it looks at colors and sharpness on the text. And we can see that, again, 48 megapixel does pretty well for ISO 100 and 200. At 400, it's debatable. I think 12 megapixel does pretty well, uh, a little bit better maybe than ISO 400. It depends on how sharp you like your things and then how much noise you like to have in your image. But then after this, I think it's pretty obvious that 12 megapixel does a bit of a better job with less noise uh, as we get into the higher ISOs. And then one more section here. I like this one because this is texture at the top of the chart. This is three-dimensional texture. We took a, a patch of fake green grass and we put it up so it's got a little bit it comes out of the chart and that's always a good torture test as well and then here it's pretty obvious look at the difference at 3200 iso between 12 and 48 megapixel i think it's uh, it's pretty obvious again I would say the same results as we've seen before. Now you might be wondering, how does this do compared to other drones that we've tested in the past? Well, let's take a look. We have the Air 2S at 12 megapixel. I'm not gonna do a 48 megapixel comparison here, uh, but at 12 megapixel compared to the Air 2S, the Mavic 3 Classic and the Mini 3 Pro at also 12 megapixel, you can see the difference. Now look at the Mavic 3 Classic. We were super surprised by uh, this, uh, th these results. And then the Air 2S as well. Look at the amount of chromatic aberration that we saw in the Air 2S and in the Mavic 3, even from bigger sensors, four third sensor on the Mavic 3 Classic and then a one inch sensor on the Air 2S. And then on both the Air 3 and the Mini 3 Pro, we have fairly similar results. Uh, I would say maybe a little bit more blended on the Air 3 side, but I think that's just a sharpness kind of thing. Uh, these images are straight from the cameras. I actually redid the Air 2 test with the latest software at the same time as I did the Air 3. So these images are really fresh right here. When we look at colors alone, you can see a little bit of differences in color uh, between all of them, although fairly similar. But uh, in this case, you can tell me which one you like best. I have a hard time selecting one. I just think they're just, <laughs> well, it, it really all depends on uh, what uh, kind of yellow you like best. And then the torture test, here it is again. Now you can see that the Air 3 and the Mini 3 Pro, both of them did not do so good with that tiny little portion at the bottom of the chart right in the middle. Um, but the Mavic 3 Classic and the Air 2S actually did a bit of a better job. I think it's because it's closer to the center. It looks like the Air 2S from all my testing is fairly sharp in the center, but once we start going to the edges, it loses quite a bit of sharpness. Uh, the Air 3 seemed to be pretty consistent as far as sharpness all across. Same thing with the Mini 3 Pro. The 3 Classic just has good image overall, I think, uh, even though you saw on that First torture test, it didn't do so good. For all the other images, it was actually really sharp. And this is all at ISO 100, by the way. And then here again at ISO 100, we're going more to the edges. And you notice there is even some, uh, a bit of uh, distortion on the image on the Air 2S. We've seen this over and over again. Uh, that bottom line seems to be tilted a little bit. And even the top line, this is not a mistake on our part. We did the testing several times and that's just the way that the lens has a little bit of distortion. And um, as far as crispness, you can see the Mavic 3 Classic still has the best of the image. Now granted it was f5.6. Why did I pick f5.6? Because that's where the drone kind of shines. 5.6, 6.3, these f-stops are actually really good and really sharp. Why didn't I use the lowest? Well, because most people are gonna be using the maximum they can out of the Classic because it has a variable aperture. The Mini 3 Pro and the Air 2S, the images were very similar. Uh, I'm starting to think that it, either it's the exact same lens or the same sensor, but I'm not quite sure 100%. So uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to make this up. And then as far as the grass at the top, again, you can see a little bit of difference. This is at the very edge of the lens. The Air 2S, I think, is a little bit more fuzzy. The Air 3 and the Mini 3 fairly close to each other, although the Mini 3 was a little bit sharper. And then Mavic 3 Classic just seems to be the sharpest in this case. 
Once we bump up the ISO, I'm gonna go through these a little bit quicker, but you can see here, the Air 2S and the Mavic 3 still don't do really well. The Air 3 and the Mini 3 seem to be doing really well. As far as the colors, again, not much of a change, even though the Mavic 3 Classic seems to be showing a little bit more of noise in this case. And then the torture test area here, the Mavic 3 Classic started to show some artifacts in the middle. The Air 3 and the Mini 3 Pro doing not so good in that specific area. And then the Air 2S somehow doing a really good job in this case. The next part of the chart, we have, we start to lose quite a bit of uh, sharpness, especially on the Air 2S side of things. The other drones are still doing pretty good. The Mavic 3 Classic still doing very solid. And then once we get to the grass, then you can see the results right here. Again, the Air 2S seems to be kind of the, the softest of all of them and then the Air 3, the Mini 3 Pro, and then the Mavic 3 Classic in order of less sharp to most sharp. And I'll do one more. I pushed it all the way to 1600. I wanted to show you the comparison here. The Air 2S seems to be doing okay. We still don't have as much of a chromatic aberration as we've seen on the Air 2S, even at 1600 ISO, it's still doing a really good job. Again, remember these lines are really, really, really tiny and really spaced out by not a whole lot. Uh, the Mini 3 Pro seems to be doing pretty good, although we can start to see some botches on the image. Going to the color section, I think, well, it depends again on what you like. I think the Mavic 3 Classic has a bit more noise in this case. I like the image on the Air 3 and the Mini 3 Pro. I think the Air 2S is uh, a bit more dull, but again, that's really up to you uh, to see what you like best. And then torture test area, the Air 2S still doing really good. The other ones, well, it's ISO 1600, so uh, not a whole lot to expect in this case. And as we get to the edge of the chart, the Mavic 3 Classic is doing a great job. Uh, the Air 3 seems to be doing a bit better than the Mini 3 Pro. And then the Air 2S, I think, well, eh, Air 2S, uh, seems to be not as sharp. Again, it's that section of the lens that's on the left side that doesn't seem to be sharp anyway. And then here's the picture of the grass. You can make your own decision from here. All right, I hope this data helped. Let us know in the comment what you think, which one you like best. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, chances are, if you own one of these drones, you might say, hey, you know what, this is good enough. Or you might say, well, this is actually quite a bit of a change. I'd like to upgrade, in which case, go ahead and get this drone. Now let's talk about the video modes. We have 4K available up to 60 frames per second, but you can also switch it to slow motion mode at 100 frames per second. You might be saying, what's the difference between the two? The slow motion mode is gonna have the video already in slow motion as you play it back. In full HD, uh, the, the 1080, we're gonna have up to 60 frames per second, but you can go as high as 200 frames per second using the slow motion mode. And something different, we have a vertical mode, which is 1080 in 916 format, up to 60 frames per second, or 2.7 at 60 frames per second. Now, I said it's different and it's new. Why is it new? Because if you remember on the Mini 3 Pro, if you've ever seen that, the lens actually rotates completely to go and do that recording in 916. Well, in this case, it's not. It actually crops the sensor, rotates the sensor and the image differently. So this lens is gonna remain the same. And this is one thing that I didn't care for in the app in itself. You have to go in the app and you have to go into the resolution to find the vertical mode. You have to select that and then it's gonna flip the image and then you'll do the recording. I liked it a lot better in the Mini 3 Pro because you had a button right here on the homepage. You can just push and then the image, uh, the, the lens in itself rotates and then now you can record that way. It was a lot fewer touches and, and clicks to get to it. I think it's kind of buried inside of the menu now and I just didn't care for it. In video mode, we have a normal mode, a normal color profile, I should say, 8-bit at 420, if you know what that means. And then in HLG or in D-Log M, we have 10-bit at 420. There's no 422 available in this drone. There's also a night video mode that allows you to bump up the ISO to 12,800 and up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Now, I have to say we haven't been able to test it just yet. We'll be doing a video in the future. As far as slow motion, 4K at 100 frames per second or 1080 at 200 frames per second. And then you can record in MPEG-4 or in MOV in H.264 or H.265 for the codec. If you don't know what that means, head over to our beginner's guide and we'll be talking about that over there. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what the video quality looks like compared to other drones. Well, this is gonna be at the very end of this video. We compiled three minutes of footage for you that has a comparison between the Mini 3 Pro, the Air 2S, and the 
and the Mavic 3 Classic. And we also compare the 3X from this drone to the Mavic 3 Pro. And you can see all that footage. I'm gonna put it at the very end because I'm gonna let the video finish with this. Uh, with, without talking, you can just watch the footage. So if you wanna see that, head over to the end, but I have more, so stick around for a second. As far as the flight modes, you'll be happy to see that we have all the flight modes that we've seen before. You have the master shots, you have all your quick shots, you have all of the hyperlapse modes and then all the panoramics modes. So right there, you'll be right at home. You have that vertical wide uh, 180 and then the sphere panorama. And then those quick shots, we have the drone, the helix, rocket, circle, boomerang, and asteroid. And then the hyperlapse, you have free, where you can just fly wherever. You can do a circle, a course lock, or different waypoints. So again, if you're familiar with DJI drones, this is nothing new. There's no additional uh, features in this case. Touching up on some of the safety features, this is the first mini slash air series of drones that has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. What we've seen in the past, you would have only front and back. You would never have the side obstacle sensors, or in some cases, you don't have obstacle sensors at all. Here, we have it all the way around by simply using these two sensors here and these two sensors. The way that they're oriented, they're gonna be able to give you full 360 obstacle avoidance, and it works really well. We've tested it a little bit. We didn't wanna break it while we were testing. We'll be doing more of this after we record this video, now that we can go and, and uh, not have to send it back and, and wait for it to come back from repair. Uh, as far as the obstacle avoidance, APAS 5.0, which is the same as we've seen in previous versions of the drone, so there is no new APAS 6.0 or whatever you were expecting. Uh, it's still the old one, which still works really, really well. We tested it on the Mavic 3 series, and we were very impressed. We had it follow somebody on the one wheel, zigzagging between trees, and it did just, just, uh, just an amazing job. We also have RTH, return to home, same as all the other DJI drones. There is no real other specific at this time, but uh, it just works exactly the same. And then we have AirSense, which is a way to find other aircraft that are flying in the airspace. This is standard on all DJI drones going forward that are over 250 grams. So this will sense ADSB technology. This is something that manned aircraft are going to broadcast when they fly in certain airspace. And that's going to warn you that there's a manned aircraft coming around. So that's a great thing. That's a great safety feature right here. Uh, you'll uh, you'll love having this and making sure it tells you. Now be careful. It's not foolproof. There are some aircraft that fly in the airspace that do not have ADSB available. Let's wrap it up with some final thoughts. The opinion on the aircraft, what I really loved about it, the 3X zoom, that really, really made a big difference. I love that great parallax effect and uh, not having 7X actually, I think is a great feature actually. Uh, 7X was cool, but I think 3X is actually a lot more usable. F1.7 makes the camera very bright, reminds me of the Mini 3 Pro, which I really love to travel with. We have a cool new controller with some better antennas and better transmission, it looks like, compared to what we've seen before. We also have better flight time on the batteries, even though these batteries are pretty bulky, right? If you were used to the Air 2S, you have these big batteries. These are very close to the Mavic 3 series. No, you cannot use the Mavic 3 batteries in this drone at this stage. Also, all the video modes being available in 1X and 3X, I think that's a big plus. And something that I haven't mentioned just yet is the name convention the naming convention of the files on here has changed. This is something that we've seen in the Mavic 3 Pro where you have the ability to create your own custom naming convention. And by default, it came to us as naming the file as DJI underscore. In the past, you would have just a number after this that started at 0001. Now it actually adds a, a date in the middle of it, a long format date with the year, month, day, and then the time at which the, record, the video was recorded. And then at the end of it, it's going to add also that four digit number. What it means is that you never will have two files that are the same name. One thing I always hated, we test these drones. We take the first video, it's called DJI 0001. You know how many DJI 0001 we have on our server? A million of them. And so now we don't have the same file name. We can easily find a file somewhere on your computer. I think it's a great addition. It's very minor, but boy, it's gonna make a big difference for our team. Another thing that I really like is the filters that we were sent. Very high quality 
From my early testing, we'll be doing more testing, but from my early testing, these are very, very accurate as far as ND uh, darkness, and they also did not create a tint other than the ND64. The ND64 was definitely very purple, uh, which is typical. We see this in a lot of, of uh, ND filters. I also like this new charger right here. Now you have to push on the battery button right here to eject the battery, but I think this is really nice and, and solid, and you can quickly see which battery is charged and which one is not, and these batteries charge very quickly. And then the last thing that I'll mention, it comes with a bag if you get the Fly More Combo, and this bag is really, um, well thought of, and why? Because we've seen other bags from DJI that were very bulky. The one that came with the Mavic 3 was just very bulky. It was very high quality, but very just difficult and heavy. This is very minimalist in a way. It just opens up. It's got something that closes very simply right here. Although some people might wanna have a zipper uh, to make it more secure, but to just travel around like this, I think it's uh, it's nice and, and quick. And then just good build quality, and then just big enough to put all the gear that you need to bring with you. And uh, yeah, it's got good padding, and I, I really was impressed at first sight when we first got it. Things that I did not care about. You cannot install the app on the DJI RC2. Same thing on the RC1, but you know what? I wish that we could actually add Litchi possibly in here. I think there are ways to hack it, but I haven't tried them. Uh, something that you might wanna try at home. There's no HDMI on the output right here. Something that we like to have when we create videos. In this case, we won't have it available. It's only available on the Pro version. There's no A-Pass available in high resolution modes. Uh, that's something that also we've seen on other DJI drones in the past. I'm not sure why, but it would be nice to have that available so you're covered, you don't have to think about it. And then the gimbal cover, man, I hate this thing. <laughs> I just cannot tell you how bad these gimbal covers are on all drones. And it's not just a DJI issue, but uh, the Air 2S, actually, now that I say this, I put this one on the Air 2S very easily. But boy, every drone after this is just so difficult to put on. It, it feels like you have to do the exact thing at the exact right time. You have to put your finger in here to move the camera. And, and it's, just, it's just not that easy. So um, I'm sure we'll get the hang of it eventually. I just don't like it. So that's it. That's my final thoughts. It's a great drone overall. Um, I think it's, if you're looking for like the next big thing, I don't know if this is it, quite frankly, to be fair. Uh, it's a great upgrade from the Air 2S, that's for sure. I think in image quality, in flight time, in pretty much everything, even though it has a smaller sensor. Uh, I love the new controller. I love the fact that this is a hybrid between the Mini 3. You can still rotate the camera and the Mavic 3 where you have good quality. I love the 1X, I love the 3X. I think all of this makes it a great combo. Something that definitely, if I travel, it's gonna be hard for me to think about, oh, should I take the Mini 3 or should I take this thing? Because this has a few more features that are available and uh, in a slightly bigger package, but maybe not big enough that I'm like, it's gonna to be too heavy. So I think this is gonna be a great go-to drone for a lot of people. The price point is sweet right between the Mini series and the Mavic series. So if you have just enough funds to get over a Mini, but not enough to get to the Mavic series, I think this is gonna be a winner. So uh, the way that it flies too is actually quite stable. Great in high winds, maybe compared to the Mini 3 series. And uh, yeah, just I think people are gonna love it. Let us know in the comments if you have any additional questions and then watch the other videos that we put out about this drone. There's quite a bit out there and we'll see you next time. All right, as promised, here's the footage of all the drones that we've compared. Now, I had to hand fly every single one of these, so there's a little bit of a difference between the footage. It's very difficult to replicate the same footage over and over again. We had an issue with the drone that we usually use to do that, so all these are manually done, but this should give you the gist of it for every single one of these locations. Enjoy. Enjoy.